Welcome to the DIY3DTech.com channel. Welcome to this edition of DIY3DTech.com. Uh, in this episode, we're going to talk a little bit about the modifications we've made to the uh, the two up printer. As you can see, it uh, is looking far from stock here, and uh, obviously a lot of changes. As as I've covered out in a prior video, we've made a change with adding. Um, a Bowden type extruder. Uh, we've added a filament reel up here. Actually we can handle multiple reels sliding back and forth up there. I've done a video on the hub design too uh, which has worked out. We've got the end pieces up on, on I think uh, at least Tinkercad and that Thingiverse and on, on our website for the um, angle to finish this off. We've built a frame out of maker rail that this actually sits on. We have feet Again, these are up on Thingiverse, and also I've done a video on working with Maker Rail on, on these feet, which it's uh, sitting on. Uh, so, uh, again, quite a bit of changes to the, the two-up printer. Another thing we did back here is we vertically mounted the power, both the power supply, the Arduino, and the ramp boards in, into one vertical space to kind of keep this shorter. These are 500 millimeter uh, 20 by 20 uh, millimeter maker rails uh, that I use for this so it's a little shorter than 20 inches long the bed has plenty of travel in this space um, both front and back we use printed uh, angle maker angle clamps both front and back to mount this so again very sturdy not going anywhere you might also notice I've changed back to the stock uh, X gantry from the plastic one I really was not liking how that particular print version of the plastic one was working and decided to go back to this version for a couple different reasons. Um, I probably will stick with this for a while. I'm debating on whether or not to pay the 80 bucks and buy the additional Z-axis which goes over here and there's a new gantry top that goes on here and this will stick out further and have a motor for uh, dual Z gantries. I I'm really considering that. I guess it depends what I decide to do in the end with this printer. One of the things that I, modifications I'm thinking about doing is adding a spring between here and here on the printer mounting to the top of the gantry, actually probably in the back here. Uh, because the idea is, is, is basically this does jerk as it, it goes up. And actually as it's printing, if you think about it, the only direction it does move. It's not like a CNC router which goes up and down and up and down. This only moves up. So having tension, upward pulling tension, it, it, it will work to, for a smoother upward pull. And that's sort of, when we look at the contemporary pulley designs, what that achieves. Now, the difference with that is it's, it's going to be a nonlinear force because obviously the further down uh, it goes, the more tension it's going to be to pull up. And as it gets up here, it, the tension is going to be less and less and less into where it actually at a certain point up here, for whatever length of spring we use is, is going to be lost. So it, it's not completely efficient. The question is, is how big height-wise of prints am I going to print? Probably on this one, not much. Most of what I'm thinking actually about using this printer for is uh, printing smaller brackets and just other novelty type stuff. Uh, because it is a PLA printer, and one of the things I did want to do is use PLA for more of experimentation purposes rather than really any type of production pieces. Now I've got the DaVinci, does ABS, does ABS actually very, very good. Um, obviously a little bit more expensive on the plastics and stuff because of the cartridge, uh, however easy to use. Uh, heated bed, very nice design. So I think for more of my production stuff, I want to keep it, keep, keep the DaVinci doing that, and just again use this for more prototyping, maybe filament experimentation. Uh, I might add a hotbed to this in the future, or something like that. Again, more so to experiment with. The other piece is, is I have the DaVinci, which does ABS out in a shop area. Uh, and this is actually in the back corner of my office, and the PLA is actually less, it smells less, let's put it that way, than the ABS, so operating this in here is not as big of a deal as if I were to bring a uh, ABS printer in here, because it would, would smell, even with the enclosed case of the Da Vinci. So anyways, uh, have done a lot of modifications to this. You can go to the website and, and, and really see 
uh, some of the pieces that we have. Basically all the pieces that I created for this, like the, the bracket up here for the extruder, the feet, etc., the, the bracket for the uh, E3D hot end are all up on uh, Tinkercad or Thingiverse. They're all on www.diy3dtech.com, so you can get to them from there. You can leave me a comment through there if you have any questions. Uh, have got a lot of man hours in this build, probably more than it's reasonably practical. Uh, however, did want to go through and do a build, initial build of a 3D printer. Um, having used the DaVinci, which came out of the box, operational, I did want to play with some of the concepts to get to understand it better. And, and also, probably in a future version, I will more than likely um, use parts from this to, to build my own future version of a much larger 3D printer. Um, so, I don't know, maybe I'll sell this one on eBay. I don't know what the secondary market is when I get tired of it. And use it or or just strip it for parts and create a new one. Uh, I probably will build a much larger version 3D printer sometime in the future, something that can print on a foot square surface. Uh, again, I'm going to play around a little bit with the PLA. I haven't really had time outside of just doing some test prints and things like that uh, with the PLA uh, because one of the keys is the size of the heated bed. With ABS, you really have to have the heated bed. With the PLA, you can get away with the non-heated bed, and, and therefore, this is where I'm thinking about creating a, a one-foot square, maybe one-by-two-foot uh, print area, uh, 3D printer to print larger objects for various different reasons. What? I have no clue at this time, just because you can, I guess. Um, however, I'm sure I'll find some uses for the... Uh, larger print format. was at Maker Fair in Detroit here not too long ago and saw basically a Delta printer that was about 20 feet tall and about four to five foot wide or four to five foot in diameter could print a human sized statue. Um, it was fascinating. I'm not sure what you would invest that much plastic in printing a human sized statue for but I guess there's uh, a purpose for everything. However, uh, again, uh, just wanted to kind of follow up on where we're at with this build. I know I put together a lot as we went through and, and built this so you kind of get an idea. Kind of wanted to follow up for you to see what's possible. I know some folks have done uh, what they're calling a 3-up version of this. I'm going to kind of call this a 2.5 version. I wouldn't really quite call it a 3-up version yet. Um, however, it, it is rather practical. As you see it sitting here, I probably have pretty close to $400 invested in this. Is this economically a good deal? Well, I guess it depends. Uh, you can get the DaVinci out of the box, the, the 1.0 version, single screwed version for, I've seen it as low as actually $350 for the full version on sale at Amazon. Typically retails for uh, $500. So for $100 more, you get kind of a working uh, unit complete. Uh, you are locked into their software and their cartridges. Unless you really want to do a lot of experimentation, this really is not a bad deal. I have the DaVinci 2.0. I really like it. I think it was a good investment for $650. Uh, to be honest, I would have probably bought the 1.0 if I had to do it over again because I really don't do that much where I need two extrude extruders. Um, so in the second extruder sometimes catches on the print as it moves around if it's too complex of an object and, and messes it up. So... Again, if you're going to get one, I would go with the 1.0 version, unless you really, really have a need for the dual colors, because dual colors do work well in the DaVinci. But uh, anyways, so would I do this again? Probably not. Uh, even doing the base build, it was a lot of work. Um, some of the things that I will share had problems with the stepper motor connectors that were on the end. I actually had to replace two of them because they were bad. So when I did the original setup, uh, I was having problems with the steppers. I thought there was a lot of different things, but at the end of the day, when I changed the connectors and it made good connection, uh, they all started working, so that was good. Um, I, I just think there's a lot of miscellaneous pieces. Also, in the Repetier software, which runs this thing, ran into some anomalies, thought the thermistor was bad, and for some reason, in the software itself, it decided to uncheck temperature sensing. 
so I kept reading a zero temperature and it was really just a checkbox so I ended up replacing the thermistor which was not bad but uh, needless to say I, I later found out it was simply that so there were just a, a number of challenges where again it, it depends on what you want to do if you if your goal is to experiment with a 3d printer and you want some basis to start with this is a, a good project because you get all the pieces and relatively good instructions and a pretty good support community on the internet if you look you know there, there's videos for myself some many others building this thing so there's a lot of reference to how to build it out there but if you're just looking to print 3d parts i would say just pick up da, Vin da vinci bite the bullet accept the cartridge mentality and call it done because uh, it's sort of like an apple product you can only live in their ecosystem but it just works where this on the other hand you can kind of make it into whatever you want um, could I have done this a little bit cheaper? One of my initial thoughts in doing the, the two-up printer was the, the sum of the pieces. I, I could buy the entire kit for less than the sum of the pieces. Is that still really true today? Uh, since I've learned a lot more about 3D kit building, I would probably say that's not the case. If I had invested a little bit more time, I think up front I could have found the pieces for about the same price or a little bit cheaper. So, you know, half in, half out, it really didn't make a difference. Uh, I think, though, I would have had to invest a little bit more time in the design of building the pieces because this is the one thing I've seen about uh, the printers on the Internet with, with the various build-it-yourself pieces it, is nobody's done a really good job of explaining here are the pieces and here's how it goes together because I do have the Da Vinci. I could have printed the pieces in ABS, but if you go to like Thingiverse, you see all these big layouts of pieces, but nobody's really doing as um, Q3D has done with this, is kind of put together the instructions. And, and rightfully so, nobody's you know making money off of it, and everybody's time is limited and, and, and such. So I get it. Uh, so this is where this was a bit of a value in that. But, but to me, the, I mean, if you're really looking for quality prints, this second Z access, just a big problem. Again, you can jury rig it as I will do with springs or pulleys, but at the end of the day, nothing is going to beat that other Z access. So if you're really bent on going this direction and it makes the most sense for you, pay the extra 80 bucks right up front, get the other Z access. Um, I think you'll be a whole lot happier and just build it with the additional Z access. The other thing, when you get it, I would probably say plan on replacing the ends to the motors. The mo ends for the motors I got were crappy and be frank I wasn't overly happy with the motors they, they do work they aren't the cleanest steppers I've seen in, in the world um, I, I, from open bills I've got some beautiful steppers for $17 a piece uh, and very very clean motion these well not not so good they're okay they'll work and they'll do well for you know what I want to do here but if I was again going for precision I would not use these motors and that's why I say I may just end up selling this on eBay for what it is and, and build from scratch a bigger um, table. So, again, just wanted to do an update. Hopefully it helped. If it did, uh, please hit the uh, like below as well as subscribe. I think it's somewhere over there, uh, you know, maybe down over there in that corner. And uh, hope to see you in a future video. Cheers.